Okay, here's the location uh, for the PDF chart in case any of you guys get a hold of one of these old units and you need some instructions. It's at uh, www.bkprecision.com forward slash support forward slash downloads forward slash PDS forward slash CRT underline setup underline chart dot PDF. And uh, if you can't read it, you know, uh, I'll try to put that maybe in the notes for this video. But anyway, it just starts off with general notes telling you that uh, this can be used with any testable CRT that's in the CRT charts. And uh, um, it says it's applicable to all BNK Precision CRT testers and rejuvenators. So, you know, pretty much you can use it with any of their, their line of the rejuvenators. And, you know, I would rather do that because I can look at it on this larger screen better than flipping through that book while I'm doing things. But if you go down through here, you'll see after the instructions on how to do the testing, you start getting charts for color tubes. There's where it starts. And uh, it has black and white tubes after this, which I don't know if I'll ever have a game like that. But they've got several columns across through here. And the columns start off, you know, like with the uh, model number for the picture tube. Like you see the first one is 6ABP1. And then it says uh, heater. And it's got the heater voltage that you should set when you're starting to do the test, 6.3 volts. And then CR-CA, I think it's for the adapter that you would use. And uh, if I scroll on down through here, I can find the exact one that I'm doing today. It's way on down. Let's see, a little bit further. I have it marked, highlighted. And there it is. Let me go up just a little, or a lot. Right there is one that we'll be doing today. It's a uh, Wells Gardner K7000 series. I think it's a K7191 or something like that. I, I'd have to look back at my at my tube, but uh, it's a K7000 series, and uh, that's the number that is on the picture tube itself. I think it's a I think it's a Zenith picture tube, and uh, A63 ADG 25X and the heater voltage is 6.3 and the adapter is number 23 and so that's the adapter we'll use today and I'll show you the adapter really quick I have three adapters come with this one I knew I, I wouldn't need to do anything except for with the number 23 mainly for this one because I had looked up before and this is the number 23 adapter has it written on there 23 and uh, should fit my tube. I haven't even taken my net board out yet to try it, but it should according to everything I've read online. And uh, one thing bugged me about this whenever I got to looking at my adapter, right here it's kind of hard to see, but there's actually a wire that's supposed to come out right there that's been cut. And let's see if we can get in the light. I don't get too much light. says focus ground right there and there's a wire that is clipped and then on the other side if you rotate it there's another wire over here and it's supposed to come out of that hole there and it's been clipped and it just says ground G, excuse me GRD but it still has eight wires going into the adapter that all come down to where it plugs onto the the wire from the CRT rejuvenator and uh, there's only eight connectors fitted in this connection here and there's eight wires and so I thought well maybe you know I don't know why there would be wires coming out of here that have been clipped but maybe they're not used so after getting online doing some research I found two charts showing the pin out for the connector here for the 23 and uh, it was numbered uh, 1 through 12 and it showed you all the connections that were used and weren't used so supposedly those two connections aren't even needed because a wire is connected to all the other eight that's in here I don't even know why it was manufactured with wires that appeared to be clipped or somebody clipped them off I don't know it's something extra like I said this is new to me but uh, this is the adapter we use and I hope I'm not taking a chance by using it um, I got on the arcade controls forum and put in a question with pictures about this uh, about 20 hours ago and no one's responded even though it's been viewed about 10 times I think but uh, 
I was hoping uh, Ken Layton, who seems to be really knowledgeable about monitors and these rejuvenators, would answer something on there about it so I wouldn't do anything to, to hurt my tube. But I don't think I will because, like I said, I did the research and it uh, seems to only be eight pins used on the end of this connector and there's eight wires that actually are connected somewhere and uh, they're actually numbered. Might be kind of hard to see here, but each one is numbered so that where each wire goes in a specific location there is a number and every one of those numbers in the chart that I looked at online uh, showed that they were used and uh, the two that seemed to be clipped weren't used so hopefully that's all legit. Let me cut away again and we'll do one more uh, um, discharging of the tube and maybe we can get the process going. Okay here we are again got the uh, clip hooked to the chassis so the monitor and we're going to discharge it one last time to make sure the charge is out of it. I've already got it up under the anode cap. I don't know if you can see. It's low light here. But I'm pressing and I want to try to hit the clip. Okay, I'm touching the clip. You can actually hear. And I'm not getting any noise. No pops. And I'm not going to press it hard enough to pop it loose because I don't feel like reattaching it. I should discharge it. I'm going to remove the screwdriver. And, uh, oops, come down out of here. Go ahead and pull the clip off and probably pop off as I flex this wire. Uh, there we go. And it should be discharged. What I'll go ahead and do now is uh, remove the neck board while we've got this video rolling. My batteries need to be changed soon. But I'm going to carefully and I don't like touching the solder joints on the back because if there is any kind of charge in there you could get a little bit discharged into your body so I've got the little piece of cardboard off of here that goes on the back of the neck board but just kind of wiggle it and pull back away from the tube you have to use some force but be careful because it is possible to damage the pins with the neck board There it goes. Ooh, it kind of lets go all at once, so it scares you a little bit. But and there is our pins on the end of the neck of the CRT. And there's what the connector on the neck board looks like. Let's compare it to the number 23 adapter right quick. There's the number 23 adapter, and sure enough, they look very similar. Same number of pins and everything, so should work, should be the adapter we need. I'm going to cut away now, and we're going to start to get set up. I'm going to change the batteries in this camera. And while I was off camera, I also got my laptop set up here because my desktop over there is a little far away. I don't want to have to keep going out and back to read the instructions, so and it went to sleep on me, but I have the same notes pulled up here so that we can read them and go through the process of rejuvenation. We'll be back in just a second. Okay, we're going to start off and we're going to go step by step. Down below the uh, very top of the PDF file, this is for the 467 and 490 test procedures, those two models, and um, it just gives a little notes there about the 490B should uh, refer to instruction manual and stuff like that, but uh, it says do not power on the CRT chassis at any time during the test of any CRT, completely discharge high voltage anode supply of CRT before connecting it to the CRT tester, and we've done all that. Okay, test one set up. So set all controls pretty ca fully counterclockwise and G2 switch in the upper left to normal. Find a proper adapter and heater voltage in the setup chart. Okay, we've already done most of that. Let's see here turn our light around so that we can see what we're doing. I'll make sure we it said uh, set this to normal and uh, then uh, set all your other controls fully counterclockwise. It's your heater voltage. That's a control to move your heater voltage up and down. Same with the G1. Turn all these controls counterclockwise tracking and of course this is the main on off setup switch uh, for the test and restore and everything we got it all the way off so it's not even plugged up yet 
and this is rejuvenate clean balance. Rejuvenate is like a, a little more powerful, a little more intense rejuvenation. Clean and balance is what most people say that's all they have to do and it, it really fixes up monitors pretty good so we're going to start with that. So everything is exactly like it says for the first step. Let's go back and make sure. Okay, it says adjust set heater to read specified heater volts. Okay, first pl plug in tube and power cord, rotate function switch to set up. Okay, so we're going to have to go ahead and hook our adapter up. Got our number 23 adapter here. And there's two cords in this casing. This right here looks like it used to be similar to a phone cord, you know, coiled, but over the years of use it's probably stretched out, lost its shape some, but it has no nicks or anything on it, so it's still in good shape. And there's the end of it. Let's see if I can hold this under my chin. And I don't know if you guys are getting a good view, but I'm connecting the two together, the adapter number 23 and the end of the cord. Okay, so we're connected up. Now we've got to connect it to the picture tube. And hopefully we've discharged this thing okay or I'm going to destroy my pretty affordable restore that I bought on on eBay. And if you see there's kind of a, a key there. Same on this. We're going to have to rotate this if we can without putting too much pressure on everything. See if we can line these up. Lined up. Well, it's very easy to push on. Okay, and it's all the way bottom out. You can see that's actually on the picture tube itself. And the whiter is the adapter. It pushes on very easy. I thought it would be a little tighter like the neck board, but it's not. So I hope it's tight enough. Doesn't feel like it's coming off too easy. So we're all connected up. Okay, let me wake my laptop up again. And uh, let's see, plug in tube and power cord. So let's go ahead and plug the power up. I could do some of this off camera, but I'm going to show you the whole process. plugged in. Okay. Rotate function switch to set up. Okay. So we're actually powering the unit on at the moment. So here we go. Set up. You didn't see it, but the meters, some of them went up. The one for the red stayed to the left. Okay. Power light is burning. So we can block a little light you can see. Power light is on, so we're getting power. And it says, uh, let's see here. Adjust set heater to read specified heater volts. Okay. Well, for this one, it was 6.3, and I'm going to make a look right quick on my note here. Take it back with me, actually. This is just a note that I had I made previously when I read the tube number. And uh, I've got the heater voltage 6.3 and the adapter 23, so we need to get 6.3 volts. Okay, here's the heater voltage, and there's ranges you can set. 0 to 4 volts, 4 to 7, and on and on. Well, we want 4 to 7 because we need to set 6.3 volts. So we're going to go up one, and we just went to 4.7 volts. And uh, this meter here not only reads for the, uh, the red gun, but it also reads heater voltage, if you can get... I don't know how clear it is at the bottom of the meter it says heater volts and uh, we need to adjust this knob here to get that as close to 6.3 as we can I don't know how well you can see but I'm going to adjust this to 6.3 going up a little further and that's dead on it that's 6.3 heater volts so we have our heater voltage set. Okay. Now the next step. Set G1 voltage to 50 volts unless there's an asterisk in the setup chart. See general notes. Okay, there was no asterisk. I can tell you there wasn't because I looked for that. And there were some others that would have like two asterisks or something or another. And 
it would denote a different type of voltage that you have to set. But uh, I think most of them are 50 volts. Um, so we're going to set the G1 voltage to 50 volts.